So the picture that comes to mind when you say that, when you say unlock, is a picture of the synaptic connections, the actual neural architecture becoming um, uh, some synaptic connections pruning away um, and new ones being created. Is, is that right? Am I getting the right well, picture? I have a similar picture, a little different than that one. But we have to be very careful about the degree to which we take these pictures literally. Mm. Uh, this mm. is very subtle stuff. What we're talking about now in terms of, you know, what to picture uh, in the synapses and dendrites, yeah. that's not quite clear yet from the neuroscience. They're getting very close to that with optogenetic techniques where they can really look at what happens to synapses in, the, in, the, in this kind of process. But we're not there yet. There are some, there's some research that has shown that even after erasure is successful and behaviorally it's not possible to re-evoke the target learning anymore at all, with special optogenetic techniques, they can reignite the target learning even then. So some, some aspect of the original encoding, uh, which the neuroscientists call the engram, the engram is the entirety of the encoding uh, structures, whatever they are. Mm. And the neuroscientists are not certain what they are yet. Uh, the, the main belief is that it's synaptic linkages, but there are some indications that it might not be only synaptic linkages that hold the encoding. And uh, as the neuroscientists say, even with full erasure after reconsolidation has happened, the entire engram is not ablated. Yeah, mm. it, and this Something is the is still yeah. there. Yeah, uh, and, and I think people can uh, look to this being the, the exciting adventure of discovery. I mean, I've been looking at the, uh, the shift in gene expression and the, 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 right. protein, yeah. the, the new protein synthesis. This, it's kind of like we re rebuild the framework. Um, yeah. But again, we only evolve what is necessary in order to make things effective, not necessarily the most effective uh, That's right. or, or unbelievably effective. So yeah. by leaving the uh, leaving some kind of framework in there, even with reconsolidation, um, it's obviously that that has been successful. Like mm -hmm. we don't have to bother with that. That just That's takes too much energy. Be more adaptive. That's, yeah. That's right. I'm, so, I was, yeah, I was adding that information so that we don't, buy into simplistic pictures that, mm. that a mm. neuroscientist would roll his or her eyes at. Yeah, absolutely. You know? You're yeah. so yeah. right to do so. Just the, just the actual time frame, which is interesting. Uh, there, there is an actual time frame when the lability of oh, yeah. the, the synapses is, uh, is pertinent. That's right. That's right. Uh, it, it looks like the, once, once the unlocking happens, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit in a minute, about what, what triggers the unlocking. Uh, the neural encoding remains open or destabilized and receptive to re-encoding through new learning for about five hours. Five hours, uh, right. Yeah, five hours in most of the studies that have checked the duration of that uh, destabilization period. Uh, it's possible that certain special types of learning might have different durations, but five hours is a good rule of thumb. And, and as you said, Richard, that detail too doesn't really uh, affect us in therapy much because most of us don't do sessions that go five hours or more. You know, mm. it's, it's typically an hour or so. Yeah. But, so. But giving someone homework to do tomorrow, that's kind of, they're in a different frame then. Uh, the ability may, may have disappeared by then. Yeah, well, what we do to uh, maintain the transformation process, the juxtaposition experience, is uh, we, we set up the client with clear instructions written down so that the client self-applies the juxtaposition experience, which newly unlocks the target learning. Ah, yes. And so the, you know, the process can be, you know, self-applied for days after the session. Now, when this works at its most effective uh, in its most effective form, even that's not, not needed. Uh, there's a spectrum of degrees of how this process unfolds, ranging from the case where 
there is just one isolated emotional learning that's underlying the client's presenting problem or symptom. And that, that particular emotional learning is not tangled into other ones like we were talking about earlier. And then one dose of juxtaposition experiences repeated of just a, two or three times in the course of the session completely turns out to nullify that schema, that piece of emotional learning. The client feels a big shift in the session, uh, comes back in a week or two and says it still feels like that and, and, and the problem is gone, you know, I, <clears throat> whether it's a, a mood state or a behavior. Hasn't happened once. I was in situations that used to trigger it reliably. No longer happens. Decisive, permanent, liberating transformational change in one, uh, from, from, from stemming from the session in which the juxtaposition first happened. Now, that's at the most effective end of the spectrum. And as I said, that happens when the underlying emotional learning is just one item, one learning, and it's not tangled into other things. Then at the other end of the spectrum are the, is the case such as the low self-worth situation, where there are uh, numerous emotional learnings. You know, every specific way a child suffers in a family creates emotional learnings. So if you're beat up sometimes, you get emotional learnings about how that works, when does it happen, what I better do to avoid it. Right. If you're also sexually molested in that family, you get emotional learnings about that. Mm -hmm. So this is now what we, what we call complex attachment trauma. Mm -hmm. When you're living in a family where there's lots of abuse of different forms, it's woven into the fabric of life, then you've got, I have clients with up to 20 powerful schemas yeah. that are cross-connected, tangled up with each other, hypervigilance, I better not do X because Y will happen if I do X, as well as low self-worth, in other words, what it all means about me. Very complex, tangled ball of yarn to begin with. Then in that case, uh, even when you create good juxtaposition experiences on any one target learning, it doesn't just flop over and dissolve. It stays around because of the complexities we've been discussing. And you've got to loosen and uh, weaken all of those related schemas over and over again until finally some of them really start to no longer exist. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very complex process. It can take dozens and dozens of sessions. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you.